Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Financial Advisors Workshop. This is the show where we introduce and interview some of the top financial advisors in America. And uh, we're big fans of the Financial Advisors Networks. Uh, these are the people that toil working with advisor, uh, working with other advisors to help their clients to do well and, and make sure that families prosper in this environment. So uh, we have a great advisor here, and he's actually right here in our headquarters city, uh, or now in the suburbs of nearby, Mark Willis. Uh, Mark, uh, welcome to the Financial Advisor Workshop. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me on. Excellent. I noticed, Mark, that you have a 312 phone number, which means you were downtown at one point or right in the city, so that's great. And uh, we're, we're right in River North, which is just north of downtown. Uh, so tell us about your firm. What's the name of your firm? And then tell us about it. Well, it's, um, the name of the firm is Lake Growth Financial Services, and we are a financial firm in the Chicagoland area, due west of downtown about an hour in Saint, beautiful St. Charles, Illinois, in the Fox River Valley. Uh, we did start our practice while I lived with my wife and daughter downtown Chicago, uh, and so that's where the 312 comes from. Right. And uh, yeah, we did get to carry it out with us, uh, which I love. I, and in fact, 312 three, is Chicago, but I learned earlier today that um, the the area where they they launch the rockets down in Florida is three two one. I think that's a great one. Three yeah. two one, right? Lift off. Right. So um, that's the, probably the only um, area code that I would more prefer than even three one two. Otherwise, I love my three one two phone number. Anyway, yeah. we were um, we started the financial practice in two thousand. Uh, well, it was in the middle of the last recession. Actually, we were coming out of the last recession. I started work in the financial services industry in 2009, uh, working for a CPA, uh, just sort of listening and learning from, from her. She was a nationally recognized CPA, and I was just sort of preparing tax forms for her. I did not get a background in finance. I have my degrees in other other areas, which we could talk about if you want, but I got focused on my own personal finances when I realized that, oh yeah, these student loans need to be paid back. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So it got me focused on my own money. And then I worked for her and I got focused on the power of financial planning, the power of tax strategy. And at the same time, I was terrified because I was getting those, I was listening in to her phone calls with clients as she was having the conversation. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. Hey, hey, Mr. Client, you're 62 years old, you're 63 years old, and the market just crashed and I just lost you a third of your life savings and you can't retire like you thought. That was the literal, almost word for word, what she was saying to clients. Now, these were probably folks that shouldn't have been allocated the way they were. Um, I was pretty young in the business at that point, so I wasn't paying much attention. I didn't have any licenses at that point. I just knew I never wanted to have that phone call. And so I almost got out of the industry altogether uh, and stumbled across some strategies that include insurance contracts and guarantees. So I got focused, really interested in contractual wealth that had that predictable out, uh, outcome, ended up getting my uh, insurance license, continued on to get my C uh, certified financial planner CFP designation. And uh, we started the, started the firm Lake Growth Financial Services, which now services um, over 1300 clients across all 50 states and multiple countries as well. That's great. How many different advisors do you have with the firm, Mark? Well, it's um, our firm, and then we have a number of advisors that I train. So there's different ripples of those advisors. Uh, there's about six to eight other advisors that I personally mentor, train on a weekly basis. We're in the middle of recruiting some additional uh, for that per, uh, process. In fact, we bring on a new cohort in a regular way. We're just starting another one as we record this. It's March. So we're starting another cohort of new advisors starting in April of 2023. But as you listen to this, we'll be doing another cohort, you know, every so often beyond our own personal kind of cohort of team trained advisors that I personally work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I also teach and train uh, a, a large group of advisors that are a part of an IMO called Set Bank on Yourself, Set BOY. Uh, which has about 200 financial professionals around the country. These would be attorneys, investment advisors, insurance agents, and they all kind of come around some of these strategies that we specialize in for our clients. And so I'll usually do training for them, which is either done online, like online courses where folks can log in and take the content as they wish, you know, at their own leisure, their own timeline. 
uh, we usually do, you know, role play and uh, work together with other, uh, with other advisors. We'll do, um, you know, mastermind calls. We'll try to really incorporate a number of different modalities of learning because we're not just going to learn it if we're just getting a lecture, you know, poured on top of us. We need to be answering questions and doing feedback and again, um, case studies and role play examples and so so forth and so on. So that's that's about 200 advisors that work with me around the country. And I've, I've been honored to be a part of that community now, uh, really since 2011. Nice. And so there's 200 advisors um, and they're not, they don't work directly for your firm, your regulated. That's agency. right. No, that's right. I've got a joint venture with them where they, you know, uh, team up with me. I work with them. Some of them have a direct financial relationship with me. Some of them are just purely colleagues and they put me in front of them uh, on a stage, whatever, to, to teach on a specific topic. Uh, so like I said, there's kind of ripples uh, to the uh, relationships we have with with our other advisor friends and colleagues. Nice. And so when you train those advisors, what do you focus on? You mentioned mastermind. Yeah. Well, let's start at the the core group, the group of about eight different associates that I get to have the privilege to work with. We'll work with them on an individual one-on-one level, doing mentoring on their business. How is there, yep. you know, specific cases that they're working on with with their clients? Uh, we'll talk about their own personal marketing strategies. Um, I've had the great problem of having way too many um, people to talk to uh, because of our marketing efforts. There's just more people on my calendar than I can personally get back to, which is why I'm handing leads off to these colleagues and associates of mine. Uh, because I just literally can cannot deal with the incredible response that we're getting from um, folks as they listen to us on podcasts or see me on YouTube or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. So the marketing response has been great. So part of it is teaching our colleague advisors, uh, the folks that I'm uh, personally training one on one, to do the same thing. If if uh, it's working for me, it may it may work for them too, to get mm-hmm. out there and to build what we call a uncancelable platform. Uh, if you know anything about kind of the internet, it's it's sure it looks free, it looks beautiful, it looks like a wide open blue ocean, but we all know that um, there are plenty of filters and algorithms on your Facebook ads that uh, can sort of by nature keep you from being seen. Uh, and if if one of these social media platforms decides they don't like your advertisement or whatever, they might not um, show it to the right people if you're just sharing on social media, your financial practice, you may or may not even be shown to even your, your social network. And so, right. so many people I know are, are pumping tons of money, Brian, into Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads and Google ads, and they're not seeing much response. I just spoke with a lady, she's been in marketing for decades, and she dumped several hundred thousand dollars into a Facebook ad and had almost no response. That's not uncommon. So what if you could create your own platform um, to build not just a, you know, a, a message, but a, a megaphone <clears throat> where the right people were attracted to you, the right prospects or potential clients were attracted to you and all the wrong clients, and you know who those are, yeah. were repelled by you. You want to yes. be positively polarizing in your message with your potential clients, positively polarizing, not negatively polarizing. We get plenty of negative polarization in the news. So how can you positively attract the right clients and repel the wrong people away? Uh, A a gentleman and mentor of mine, Alan Ekstrand, he's been a financial advisor for almost 50 years. He said to me, Mark, it's just as important the people who are not your clients as the people who become your clients. So we look at and we build and we, uh, to answer your question, finally, uh, we help people, <clears throat> we help our associates and our colleagues build a platform to attract the right clients to their practice so that they can wake up every morning and see that they've got a full calendar of people who are just begging and excited to work with them. Nice. Well, that's that's great stuff. And, and uh, you know, advisors should be about growth. There's so much opportunity there. Sounds like you're really teaching them how the way to go. Uh, wonderful. You mentioned earlier about the power of financial planning, and I, I, I was intrigued by that comment. I think I, I think I do understand some of it, but it sounds like you have your own way of thinking about it. Tell us what you think the power of financial planning is. 
Well, it's a it's it's incredible how it's changed my own personal financial life and family tree just to think intentionally about this thing called money. I mean, we're all listening to this, we're all aware of this thing called money, but so many people go their whole life and never really stop to ask, what do I want my money doing for me? Mm-hmm. And they're told by somebody to get that 401k. They're told by somebody else to open up their credit card. They're told by somebody else to get that student loan or to open up a Roth IRA or, or to get into crypto. And you know, I think most people who are not financial planning nerds like you and I, I'll, I'll use that phrase uh, generously, right? Um, I'll, I think most people live their life, going through their life, thinking about money like a movie they walked into 45 minutes late. You ever been into a theater halfway through the show and you're like, what, what is going on here? What's going the on here? I don't understand. Yeah. I think most people see money this way. They think, I don't understand why interest rates are low or high, or I don't understand why the price of eggs is going up. And I don't understand why my 401k balance dropped 20% last year. Yeah. They don't know that, but they just know it hurts and they don't, you know, they, they, they want to maybe understand, but it's confusing and they feel like somebody else is smarter than them. Yeah. Um, and so they want to just hand it off to somebody else. And we try to help folks take back control uh, rather than just being a, a tennis ball floating down the gutter of their own life. We want them to be able to swim upstream and get up to their goals and reach their potential. What are your thoughts on financial planning and the power of financial planning? Well, it's the same. It's the same idea that it gets a roadmap for how to proceed and to, to make sure that you follow the right the right uh, moves to make sure that you meet all your obligations and outline clearly what they are. Uh, there's only three elements to a financial plan: there's what you put in it, that's what you take out of it, and what it earns while you're there. Mm-hmm. And there's the only you can only really have control of the first two. Uh, it's hard to control the the, the performance. Uh, but you can make certain moves. But you know, if folks do that, then then they'll know where they're going. It's intentional, as you said. It's intentional. Take a look at it and say, where are we really going? Why are we doing this? Instead of, as you say, walk into the theater forty minutes into a show and have no idea what's going on. And unfortunately, most Americans do that. They really well, do. You know, I, I was not exactly a derelict teenager, but have you ever uh, taken a bag full? Have you ever taken a rock and thrown it through a window? I'm not going to say I did or didn't do that as a teenager, but uh, you can imagine, right? Yes. Um, so why does the rock puncture the window glass? It's the focus that punctures the glass. If I had an e- equivalent bag of pebbles and I just had a handful of pebbles and I tried to launch that handful of pebbles at that same glass window, what would happen? It would just scatter, right? right? But the focus of the rock helps you puncture the window and break through to your to your goal, right? So let's set aside uh, you know teenage uh, tomfoolery here and let's just think about how that mean what that has to do with our financial plan um, or your business as a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. If you've got a little bit of financial um, advertisement on Google and you're trying ads on Facebook and if you're trying you know if you're trying this and that and the other and you've got a little bit of something in the newspaper and you've got a radio ad over here, and you're not sure what your message is, it's like throwing a handful of pebbles at a window. But if you've got a targeted strategic plan where you have a clear and compelling idea and you know exactly who you should be working with and more importantly, who you should not be working with, uh, yeah, you can break through to 10X or even 100X your income as a financial professional um, and have you know focused, targeted, and cost-efficient marketing strategy. Uh, and now on the financial planning side, if you know exactly as a, as a consumer, as a, as a buyer of financial products, if you know what you want your money doing for you, you don't need a 17 different financial tools. If you've got a few that really do what you need it to do, you can, again, meet your goals without taking a bunch of unnecessary risk or undue complexity. Nice. So let me ask you, Mark, um, as you do plans, then how do you, and I presume that many of the people you're training will follow some of your lead in investing in ideas. How do you invest? Do you well, we're, offer? we're not so average. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, definitely, uh, not your average financial firm. Uh, right. and we are, we believe in comprehensive financial planning, but we also believe that you got to be a specialist. Uh, you know, I don't believe that, uh, I didn't 
get into this business to be a family doctor. I wanted to be a heart surgeon, if you know what I mean. Right. Um, and I realized the power and the value of the family doctor, but I wanted to be a heart surgeon. Why? Because I needed to be a specialist. I think the money is better. And I think, you know, I, I know my lane, right? So I don't have a, I don't have a complete set of, um, you know, 75 different financial products that I offer clients. I am a certified financial planner, so I only recommend these tools whenever it's in their best interest. Uh, but one of the specializations that we've taken on is a modernized form of whole life insurance, of all things. Uh, mm -hmm. we, use the, we use the tool of whole life insurance as an asset class to couple against their other investments. So we'll review their, their investment portfolio. We'll look at their risk tolerance. We'll look at all that. Uh, we'll review kind of where they're at with their 401ks at work and their IRAs that they might have. And then we'll say, hey, what if we pair this whole life policy, which is maximized for cash value, minimizing the commissions? What if we pair this whole life policy with your other investments? And we did some math on this, and there's some good math behind this. We can get into this if you want. But if you had four or five years worth of, of living expenses represented as cash value, in a whole life policy, and you also had your other investments. We call this the buffer or the volatility buffer, the buffer asset. Uh, if you had a whole life policy and a market crash happens, rather than taking money from your investment portfolio, take nothing from the investment portfolio when the market is down. We don't want double pain. We don't want to withdraw when the market is down. So we take zero from our investments that year. And instead we pull from the whole life policy which is guaranteed to grow for us every single year, which is accessible money tax-free. Uh, and so we pull from that whole life policy when the market's down. And then instead, when the market recovers, now we've got a much better asset. Our investments didn't suffer double pain. Uh, and generally speaking, we can take a 4% a withdrawal rate and turn it into more like a 9 or even 12% withdrawal rate off of our whole you know, investment portfolio because of having this buffer asset, this whole life policy. For a lot of clients, that's a that's a big deal when it comes to how much money they can take out in retirement. Yes, it is. Well, <clears throat> we all remember uh, 2006 when the retirees were retiring confidently who ended up going back to work in 2008 and 2009. Uh, and so we're, we might be seeing a little bit of that coming up as, as uh, we've seen a lot of people do very, very poorly last year um, we we like to uh, we like to phrase last year as the worst investing year uh, on memory because the bond market, which is significantly larger than the stock market, was yeah. down big. So, Mark, how did you guys do last year? Did you guys do okay? Every this is going to sound crazy, but every single one of our clients hit all time record highs last year. That's great. Why? How? How is that possible? Because yeah. we yeah. personally in. Um, you know, the strategies we offer offer a guaranteed increase of cash in the whole life policies or in mm -hmm. the fixed contracts and the annuities or whatever that we set up. Each one of those contracts has a guarantee that the policy will be worth more this year than last year. So right. I, I even on my podcast, our first podcast of this year, the podcast is called Not Your Average Financial Podcast. And the first episode of the year, I had a prediction and I said, hey, I don't know what the market's going to do, but your whole life policies will hit another all-time record high this year, just like they did last year and the year before and the year before. Uh, so, you know, there now have some of our clients lost money in the market? Yes, we've had clients lose a lot of money. One one client had a lot of money in AMC stock, unfortunately. Um, most people lost somewhere between 15 and 25% last year in their investment portfolio. But every dollar I helped them manage and helped in install into the accounts we set up for them, um, they only saw gains. Uh, just be nothing fancy I did. We just set up policies that have contracts that guarantee an increase. So that was the buffer, wasn't it? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we pushed that button and made sure it worked. I wanted to be, I guess you could call me a post-recession planner because I wanted to make sure that whatever we set up for our clients, if the market was to do what it did again in 2008, I wanted to make sure I never had to make that call to the client saying, hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Client, but I just lost you, you know, 15, 30% of your money. So now these whole life policies give us the ability to give us the, give our clients that good news. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you have a good long-term plan. And so 
bad years like that don't affect your clients as much. And I think that's a good way to go. Um, we are facing a recession. The Fed's very quickly raising interest rates here. They were talking of slowing down. Now they're talking more hawkish. They're going to be accelerating the increases again. Markets taking that pretty roughly in the last week. What do you see for the future here, Mark? Uh, you ought to give us your give us your best guess. Well, the yeah, guess is all I'd give you, and it's worth uh, what you paid for. <laughs> so I don't know is what is the real answer. What I can tell you is what history has done. Uh, I think if your financial advisor doesn't have a crystal ball, he should have a history book. He or she should have a history book. And so looking back, how did things go in the last time we went through this in the early late 70s, early 80s? Um, certainly there was some volatility in both stocks and bonds last year. Interestingly, um, whole life insurance has a performance history of over 200 years. So we can go back and look at how it did in the early 80s. And guess mm -hmm. what? Dividends went up as interest rates rise. The whole life policy's dividend will Im improve. So mm -hmm. we've, we've saw dividends 10, 12, 15% going through the early 80s on whole life policies. That's unheard of these days. Usually dividend whole life policies are going to do something more like middle single digit tax-free returns of four, five, six percent but if the dividend, if if interest rates stay high, if the Fed keeps pushing them up, that's actually like good news for yeah. these fixed fixed and in, um, fixed products like Whole Life. And I'll just mention quickly: this has been a boon for our business. Uh, like the the volume of people searching for alternatives when they felt like nothing, there was nowhere to hide last year. This year, that's why I'm. You know, talking to you right now because there's so much demand. We need more uh, colleagues, associates, partners who can do what we do because the interest is so like massive. We need all hands on deck to help people look at alternatives to what they've been taught was the only way. Which again, there's nothing wrong with having a, a nice, beautiful, protected, and growing stock account. Give, mm -hmm. give me some growth stock, give me some dividend paying stock, give me some emerging markets. You know, I think all of those are going to have some winners and losers this year. But if we can also incorporate non-correlated assets, you know, I always say you want your eggs in 12 different baskets, but you also need some of your eggs on different trucks, just in case the right. truck, one truck goes off the cliff. Right. Wow. You have a real plan, Mark. This is really great. Um, and you, since you're a mentor and a leader of advisors, I usually ask the question as we near the end of our discussion is like, what would be one big message you'd like to tell our industry? And imagine right now about 300 advisors will hear this in the near term, probably a thousand by year end. So imagine you're in that room where they're all standing there waiting to hear from you. Uh, you do this every day, it seems. So uh, what, what kind of message would you send to that group? It, it's an incredible time to be doing what we do. People, Americans are less financially secure than maybe in any time in my memory. Uh, and a long time, I think from now, you want to hear people say, thank you for helping me during that period of time. Thank you for helping me in 2023. You changed my life. You changed my family tree. Uh, I think that's the kind of thing that we like to listen for and wait for. Uh, and so just remember that you know, the, the money is just uh, digits on a screen, but at the end of the day, you want at, at the end of the day, you want to be able to have something where you can say, yes, I did what I could. And I was able to help as many people as possible uh, to reach their potential. Excellent. What do you see as the future for financial advice? I, I mean, I, honestly, I think as, as software and robo advisors kick up, I started thinking, well, what is it that we can do that robots can't? And here's my thoughts. I'll be brief about this. I'd like to know your anything you'd add to this short list. So sure. one, I think human advisors offer empathy that robots can't. We can offer empathy. Hey, I know you just lost your job. Or hey, I know you just lost 10% last month and we can't retire like we thought. So empathy. I think courage is something I don't get from a robot but I can definitely get courage to save a little more or encourage me to, to buy that first real estate deal when I wasn't sure I could before. Uh, so courage. And uh, honestly, I think aha moments is the third. 
So an advisor can say, hey, have you ever considered dot, 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 a tax strategy that you might not have seen before? Or whole life insurance of all things designed a specific way? Or this particular dividend paying stock that you might not have even known existed? Mm-hmm. Aha moments are what bring loyalty to your client base. Um, I really believe that it's the aha moment. They want they want the guide. They want the they want the um, the Gandalf. Uh, t- your clients want a Gandalf to help them through their journey. Um, yep. You know, Frodo was brought into a movie forty five minutes too late. He didn't know who Sauron was. He didn't know who these you know ring wraiths were. But he had Gandalf to keep him safe and to take him all the way to his goal. So you want to be uh, that guide with aha moments. So those three things. Anything you'd add to that, Brian? Anything that you feel like? Would, would add to the future of financial planning? I think you're right. I, you know, there's been much ballyhoo about uh, systems and betterments. And, and uh, uh, we've seen this in the past where in the 70s, uh, they deregulated the commission world. And then all the discount brokers came up and everyone was going to fire their broker and go to Rosen Company. Uh, that, you know, became TD and firms like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, usually what happens in bad markets, their account growth wanes. And then people go back to financial advisors who show empathy, who understand things. They give them guidance. Uh, computers don't give guidance. That's right. Uh, so so I, I think that the, the, the future for individual financial advisors is quite good. Uh, they need us more, more than ever. Um, not that we need them to be dependent on, on us, um, but you know, clearly there, there is a skill set here that allows a, a, a well-trained financial advisor to be able to guide someone through a very complex and increasingly daily, uh, increasingly complex world. Right. Um, all the Bitcoins and all the crazy things that are going on out there. So I think the future for us is quite good. We have to wear shades. It'll be very sunny out there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think we've, we've got more than enough work to do. And I think we need about 10,000 more financial professionals a year added to this to keep up with the massive flood that's coming at us. So keep up the great work, everybody. And, um, you know, hopefully we can see you at the finish line. Well, thanks, Mark. This has been a great discussion. And uh, you're really a leader, truly a leader in our industry. Every, every financial advisor is leading their clients, but you're a leader in the industry as well, as well as your clients. Well, thank and that's you. Quite honorable. And, and uh, thank you for sharing all your thoughts with us today in the financial advisor workshop, Mark. Um, Thank you. And likewise, you've been, uh, I think, at this and helping to change people's financial futures for decades. And thank you for the good work you've done all the years uh, past and the years to come. Our pleasure. And uh, thanks all our listeners for being with us today. And uh, we're going to we're going to leave it there. We're going to come back again shortly with another great uh, financial advisor serving a great group of clients here in America. This is our first interview in Chicago, ironically, out of 40 45 episodes. We've been somewhere in America, but not here. So uh, glad glad to uh, meet another Chicago brethren uh, on the in the financial advisor workshop, Mark. Well, and thank you. And if I if it's okay, uh, I just want to mention if folks want to chat with us after this, if you were you know curious to learn more about either the financial strategies I mentioned or about our training, uh, you can come and and check us out at. Um, lakegrowth.com. That's L-A-K-E-G-R-O-W-T-H.com. Click book a meeting. It's a big button. It says book a meeting. And then just mention uh, this show and uh, in the in the agenda, and I'll know what we want to talk about. So um, anyway, thank you, Brian, for having me on. Again, that's lakegrowth.com. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. We'll leave it there. Have a great day, and we'll be back shortly. 